everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Bucker Designs and I have a fun box for you today featuring lots of new products. Now I wanna start by showing you this box. This is actually a box that we made at my Stampin' Bingo last month and it's um, one that I've had some questions about. So I thought I would make something similar um, and kind of point out how you can recreate this box as well. Um, now I haven't made a tutorial for this box because this was exclusive for my bingo members, but I can tell you that it uses this beautiful framelit. These are called Springtime Ex Expressions, Springtime Expression Framelits. They are in the new 2018 annual catalog from Stampin' Up! And so I'm gonna make a box that's a little bit smaller and I'm gonna use the butterfly. Um, I also wanna point out what makes this box so beautiful is that we used the same color. We used Coastal Cabana for the lid and then Coastal Cabana for the flowers. And we put um, the adhesive on the back, the multi-purpose adhesive sheets before we cut it and then we were able to stick it down really nicely. All right, so that's the box we made at Bingo. And here's the box that I made. I'm using a lot of the same products. I am using, again, the other springtime expression framelit, that big, beautiful butterfly. And I'm also using the Abstract Impressions stamp set that goes along with this these framelits. You can get them together in a bundle at 10% off. Now, the box also features a new in color. This is called Lovely Lipstick, and it is probably one of my favorite colors of all time. It's red, but it's also pinkish, and it's bright and bold, so I love it. And I paired it with Night of Navy, when I thought those two went really well together. All right, well, let's get started on our box. The first thing you're gonna need is Night of Navy cardstock that measures seven and a half by six and a half, and with um, lovely lipstick that measures five and a half by six and a half. And it looks like I have a few pieces hanging on here. All right, now before we do all of our scoring, I'm gonna pull over my grid paper and we're gonna do lots of stamping all over. Um, you gotta remember to do this first because you can't do it after you put your box together. Ask me how I know. <laughs> okay, so I'm using this image, which is this one right here. These three go together to make a nice flower, um, but I'm using this one right here. All right, now I'm gonna use Lovely Lipstick Ink, and I'm just going to randomly stamp this little abstract flower. Maybe it's a rose, I'm not sure. Just all over. I want some of them kind of hanging off and I want some of them closer together, but just cover it to create really your own pattern paper. All right, I think that's good. Now we're going to clean our stamp because we're gonna use it again, and this is our new um, um, chamois, <laughs> Stampin' Chamois, and yes, it looks disgusting, doesn't it? But it works beautifully, look at that, right off. So you rinse it out, um, and it rinses all the ink out, leaves all the staining, but it cleans your stamps. Look, I can rub that all over and just stamp, and it's totally clean. I have stored mine in just one of our clear stamp cases. All right, so let's pull over the Knight of Navy. Same stamp. Looks like I might have a little fuzz there. And this time, I'm gonna focus more on the outer edges because this is the outside of our box, and that's really all you're going to see. So just in and out, some kind of will creep down below, but mostly around the outer edges. We're gonna score this at an inch and a half, so when you're stamping, think about where an inch and a half is. All right, I think that's good. All right, so let's clean off that stamp before we have some kind of stamping disaster. There we go. All right, now you're gonna need your Simply Scored for this. And let's start with the big one. This is the Knight of Navy. Remember, it is six and a half by seven and a half. And we're gonna score it at one and a half on all four sides, okay? One and a half, one and a half, one and a half. Now you wanna get your lovely lipstick. And we're gonna score this one at one inch on all four sides. 
But before we score this, we're gonna add something that I call a shim right here on the edge. It's going to create a just a tiny hair's uh, width of difference between our lid and our bottom, and that's gonna help put that lid down on there a little bit easier. So I have taken five post-it notes, and I'm just gonna put them right here on the edge. And this time, I'm gonna score at one inch. If you were to do one and an eighth, or make it just an eighth of an inch, inch difference on each side, the lid would be too big. And so we don't have anything less than an eighth. So that's why I created just a, a shim to kind of create a little more width on that lid. Okay, so now let's put our boxes together. First, let's score those lines. Let's burnish them really well. If you get your bone folder, you can easily get that done. Nice and crisp. All right, now take your scissors and cut here and here. And turn it around and do the same. Now when you're creating 3D projects, you need to use a really strong adhesive. And most of the time I use tear and tape. But on this box and where I live in South Texas, our humidity is really low. I mean, really high, I wish it was low. So I'm gonna use some Tombow, and I'm gonna just put a little bit of Tombow on each of those four corners. I have found that this holds better than anything else when our humidity is super high. Now, one way to get it to stick so that you don't have to sit here and hold it is to get some clothespins or some binder clips and just slide those behind and then use those binder clips or whatever you're using, little clips, to hold those down for a few minutes. See how they pop open? And that way you can move on and do something else while you're waiting for those to dry. All right, let's get that one done. So there's our lid. Now we're gonna do the bottom exactly the same. So burnish all those score lines. And then you're gonna cut with your scissors again, the same way, right like that. All right, now I'm gonna use that Tombow again. And four more clips. And hopefully by the time we're done making our little decoration for the top, it will be all dry. Here in South Texas, especially in the summer, our humidity is just crazy high. So I have found in the last few weeks that I have really had to kind of think second, secondly about my adhesives and how I am doing them. Okay, so set that aside. now. Let's make this cute thing. Now you could do how I, I did the other one and put adhesive on the back and have it stick down, but I really liked it popped up because I felt like that gave my stamps a little more attention that way. Things didn't kind of blend all together. So let's move that and get our big shot over here. And we're going to use this beautiful butterfly right here to cut our butterfly. You know what, before we do this, let's stamp our sentiment so we can cut them at the same time. I'm using the sentiment from the stitched all around and I am using the thank you, which I love. And I'm using the stitched label framelits that go nicely and it fits perfectly around that one. So that's what we're using. And we're just gonna do that on Whisper White with our lovely lipstick. Right there, and make sure you close that red, that red ink. It always seems to get on everything. All right, so I'm gonna put my butterfly here. Now this is a very intricate die, so you're gonna wanna run it through several times. Um, I find it's best to put it in longwise, that way it gets more pressure than if it was just going like this. Um, if you have the precision base plate on your Big Shot, that would also be really good for this die. All right, so we're gonna put that one there. And we're gonna run these through. I'm gonna do them twice, and then I'm gonna check on our butterfly. 
Did it go all the way through? I'm gonna do it twice and then we'll see if we need to run him through again. And we'll move this out of the way because we know that he's done. Let's look. You can pick it up. Oh, I can tell it's already done. Good, see, it just fell out. These uh, really, they have done such a good job with these new intricate dies. They um, cut just beautifully. I'm always expecting to do a lot of work on them and there's no need. Look at that, it just all fell out. All right, so now, see those came out too really nicely. I'll need to get these out again. We might as well do it now so we don't have to stop before our next project, right? Oh, those came out great. Okay, now we're gonna stack this up on a piece of vellum and I'm gonna cut it with a starburst punch. There we go. And I'm gonna use some dimensionals. So first the starburst punch and then the beautiful butterfly and then the sentiment. There we go. Well, we're offset it a little bit. All right, now we're gonna add some ribbon to it, of course. I, when I am making this video, it's the end of May and it's the end of school, so I am thinking I'm going to use these boxes to put a gift card in for my daughter's teachers at the end of the year. Some of the gift cards you buy, you know, are kind of bigger, they're in a little package, and I was thinking, I believe that they would fit nicely in here. All right, so where are my glue dots? Here they are. And I'm just gonna stick that on just like that. Okay, we're almost done. Let's see if our glue is, ooh, it's perfect. And over here, take all these little, little doodads off. And sometimes you have to squeeze in the middle just a little bit, but look at that, perfect. A little trick for you. Now, if you'd like to make the other box, the size of that paper is just a half an inch bigger on each side. So you can recreate the, the, the first one that I showed you. Just a half an inch bigger on each side and same scoring. All right, there you have it. Isn't it beautiful? So you can see it looks like I stamped more than I did over here. Hmm, I like them both. All right, let me know if you have questions, you guys. Thank you so much. And if you'd like the measurements and the project information, click on the link here in the video. It will take you back to my original Facebook Friday post where I did these during a Facebook Live. You'll find a PDF under the last picture that has all the measurements and product information. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.